Dave here. How are you? It is the 30th of December. I'm cutting my head off there if I lean forward too far, so I'll stand back a little. 30th of December 2018, the last show for 2018. I trust everyone's well. Um, and if you're in Australia uh, handling this heat that we're copping at the moment, you may see that I was a bit crazy during the week. Maybe the heat affected me and affected my judgment and said, Dave, go outside and uh, do some concreting. Well, it was only 107 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is 42 degrees Celsius. And whilst we're there, I shall throw this thing over and we can have a quick look. Here it is. It was too hot. There's the temperature inside and outside. 26. I've got to encourage you to insulate your garage door. This is my little RAV and we'll put 300 kilos of concrete mix in the back, 34 bags and uh, laid it uh, around the edges to protect my um, edge paving was starting to collapse. One of those holiday jobs I just had to get done. So it's uh, that. I, look, I'm glad it's done because it will set over the next couple of days and then I'll be able to hook in and either glue the pavers down around the edge. I may use uh, landscaping glue and a gun, or I'll mix up some sand cement mix and go that way. Anyway, there we go. That was, that's uh, what other people have been chatting about in the stream as well, about the temperature we've had. It's been quite warm. Let me see what else have we got here. I just ran that thing on too hot. Uh, Stuart's fix uh, for an on off switch on his Trend Air Shield. Now, he's very clever, and I made comment to him. I said, you are very clever, Stuart. And he said, no, no, I just got to do it. He has troubles with his um, socket in his shoulder. So to reach right around the back behind his head to turn the machine on and off, he's come up with a solution, and it's bloody clever. And I'll sh look, I'm going to show you that right now. Let's see if I can see it here. Here we go. Now, Stuart will be talking during this. Right, the magic touch switch helmet. All you need to do is to cut the wire here, which runs from the plug on the battery box into the motor. Split that and then connect onto those leads some additional cable. Um, you're going to need really to solder the joint and heat shrink it. There's not a lot of room in there for putting um, crimp connectors and so on. But um, it's any way you like to join it up. You need a positive and negative to the board, which comes straight off that cable. And um, then you'll need a switch lead returning to the motor, and also the neutral direct to the motor. Wiring all in that area there, all the alterations. And then they run underneath the duct, underneath the motor, and down into the helmet. You can just about see them there, and that little thing in the middle there is the circuit board. It's just stuck on the side of the helmet at the moment with some um, greenhouse repair tape. So that I just make certain it's in the right position for me once I've used it a few times. And that's really all there is to it. We close the helmet up, and um, all you need to do then turn it on and by switching touch the side of the helmet and it switches off touch it again on so you can literally raise your hand way and you've switched your helmet on and off without any messing around at the back of your head I do hope that's useful to you sorry about the quality of the video it's not my forte but uh, I hope you find it uh, an interesting modification. There you go. How cool is that? I love it. Now, if you've got things that you've done to machines, make sure, of course, that it's safe. I don't want you to muck around with something that's um, likely to become a health hazard for you. Uh, I'd love to see them. Send a little video in like Stuart's done. I was fascinated. I said to Vicky, oh, I was watching this video and I was looking down at Stuart's hands while he was doing these things. I was thinking, they've got some uh, weathered age to them. He must have done a lot of stuff in his life. And I looked down at my hands. <laughs> my hands looked actually older than Stuart's. So it's every now and then it's good to get a reality check in life. 
what's the next thing we've got here? Uh, I'm going to have a quick read on the discussion here. Uh, Gillies, uh, I surely will have a big smile like Joe and uh, got when he put together his stand bench when I get you, when you get yours. Well, there you go. It, Barry, wasn't it a great idea? Very, very. He's got a, it's, as I say, it's his, the rotor cup in his shoulder isn't good. And, you know, that happens to all of us. I had to give the tools away because my left shoulder was going on me. It was either surgery or get out of the game and let it rest. And I felt as strong as an ox now. But if I kept doing what I was doing, surgery. And I didn't want to go down that path. Brett Guthrie, morning. All good day from the West. A real opportunity for me to watch. Why aren't you at church, Brett? What are you doing? I'm, I hope you prayed for forgiveness before you left the flock. <laughs> just, just kidding. Um, Brett is Father Brett from over in Western Australia and does a fantastic job looking after, I think he's got four different parishes he has to zap around on Sunday and see everyone. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Brett, but uh, I think it's fantastic looking after everyone's um, spiritual life out there in the outback. Uh, Meridian, I think it is, in Western Australia. Very, very warm out there. What's the next thing? Stuart's fix. Okay, then we've got... Joe got his, uh, gets a Christmas present that he did not expect. So I put a little video up on YouTube this morning regarding that. And uh, it's lovely. I asked Gary, who is Joe's dad, if he could uh, take some photos while Joe was putting it together. Because Joe had no idea. Gary bought it for him as a Christmas present. This massive big thing under the tree. Standard bench. Can you believe it? Anyway, he, um, he took the photos and I compiled a little video of it. And... Uh, just showing you how easy it went together and and uh, his son is Joe's Joe his son is very very happy with it and going to be taking it back to his place and away they go so apparently Gary got bench withdrawals <laughs> and he wants fun as well so I've got to knock one up for him now as well uh, that leads me on to the other thing uh, I don't think I need to show you the video it's it's on YouTube and it's already had some crazy amount of views this morning uh, but by all means go and have a look at it and if uh, if you want one, I put a link below that as well. Uh, we finally got a website created. Now, John uh, Lafferty and Julia Piccoli uh, have been fantastic. And Julia is a web designer and she built a website for me. Can you believe it? Like out of the goodness of her heart, she said, Dave, I want to do something for you. You're helping John because um, John's kind of restricted to hanging around on the property a fair bit because of his polycystic kidney disease, which isn't it thing that he's inherited. It's no fault of his own. It's not as though he's gone drinking too much Coke, although he does enjoy Coca-Cola. Um, I'm wondering if he's got to back off that, whether he's a neurologist or whatever they call it. Is a neurologist? Or, tell me what the person who looks after kidneys is. Neurologist and probably brains, isn't it? Let me know, John. Um, now, uh, so anyway, the benches, the, the website is done. And, you know, I'm going to be blatantly advertising here. You can order the plans off the site now. It asks you for a couple of details. and That sends an email to me straight away. And I do all this stuff, whether it's in Australia. Oh, sorry, plans. It download, you download it straight away. So it's a PayPal and credit card link. Click, bang, down come the plans. Easy. Or you can actually get the bench made. I will make the ones in Australia for you. And New Zealand, if you want them in Canada or in mainland USA, I have Luke over in the States and he makes them. So there's a couple of details. You type in your name, address and a contact number for couriers and for, um, for shipping quotes. And Luke will do all that and send you out an email at nephrologist. Okay, there we go. Oh, Julia's piped in as well. There, everyone's watching. <laughs> a butcher. I don't... Um, the baker and the candlestick maker. All right. Uh, okay. So getting back to the website and Julia is watching now. Thank you very much, Julia, for everything you've done. Uh, John tells me you had uh, quite an evening last night after you finished finally doing all the checks and everything on what was happening with the website. And I expected you not to get up today. I thought you'd be just flat out and say, you know what? Stuff it. <laughs> I'm too tired. I'm not getting up. It's too hot. I'm not going anywhere. Coke is bad for the kidneys. Okay, Zane, Dave, would you be maintaining your Etsy site for those who bought before your new site? Uh, yes, the Etsy site is still going to stay there. I'm duplicating up a little bit. I'm trying to make sure that the price of the bench on the Etsy site is the same as the price on the website. So for your information, at the moment, at the moment, the plans are 
Australian. Now I've been trying to get it $10 US, but the thing is the dollar fluctuates. They, they don't stay still and I couldn't get it being an Australian. I couldn't get Etsy to do it in US and lock it there. It's just, I don't know how that works. But anyway, the new website, fantastic. Uh, go and have a look. I've put a link in the description box below. Oh, there's also a new sweepstake on at the moment, and it's for another set of eye muffs. And I haven't even got my eye muffs kicking around here because I use them all the time. Uh, they'll probably be out beside the CNC machine because they're great for sound and also for eye protection, just in case something comes flying off the machine. It's traveling at 16,000 RPM, and if I got in the way, uh, not very good for me. Um, okay, so, 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 that's the giveaway. As I say, it's down at the bottom. The Trend $100 gift card giveaway uh, has finished, and I've got some entries here. There's a few pages, and I know who the winner is. So you'll have to hang around and uh, you like the stubby holder for the uh, the coolie whatever you want to call it yeah the giveaways that you know they come up to the store at carver tech where i work now and then and they uh, if someone buys a machine if there's a promotion on at the time we give them something so i think the last promotion was a beer stein buy a machine you get a beer stein I think there's a few left there just in case you uh, have bought a machine and you no one gave you the beer stein. Get back in touch with them. Say, hey, where's my beer stein? <laughs> Don't go going in there if you've already got a beer stein and pretend you didn't get one because that's just not nice. Um, <clears throat> talking about that, I'll have some fluid. Okay, new website is live. live. We're going to look at this bad boy. And this is the RTS... C, which stands for cordless. Now this is a hybrid machine. And I got this around two days ago and I've been having a little bit of a play around with it. I've got it because I'm gonna do a whole lot of painting on the steel joists on the veranda on the house. They weren't galvanized, so I've got to cut them back and I'm gonna use hammer type paint. So I'm gonna give it a light sand with this, with the um, granite mesh. And you can see, you can see straight through it. There you go. Filtering, filtering my comments. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that is something we're going to play around with that a little bit today. And uh, uh, does a nice can hold a plug plug. Yeah, good on you, Barry. I don't care. You know, Fest will look after me in a way. Uh, now, what I was going to say is, in a way, as in, look, look what they've lent me. This is their separator. And I told you I was going to get a hold of the separator. So I'm going to play around with that for a while and let you guys know what I think. I've used it a little bit at the moment. I'll show you a little bit today and uh, we'll see what, how it goes. It's a whole lot more compact than the, um, than the other one. It's got the cyclone sticking up above it. This, that's sitting on the CT26 already. Now, I am going to let you guys know. I'm going to talk about this a bit. We're going to use it on camphor laurel, on end grain and ordinary long grain and uh, I'm going to show you why I like it. I'm going to also show you a piece of information on what the different speeds are for. So here's the variable speed. I can change it up and down and it was a bit of an eye-opener for me as well. I tend to read instructions. See these? See these things that most people throw out? I read them. I don't read all the other languages, but I read those. Okay. Um, <laughs> Stubby hold is $355. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, where are we? Now, yes. So what I was going to do is I was going to say, I'm going to demonstrate this. And if you like the look of it and you think you need to get one, I'm going to let you know something. Festool has a promotion at the moment. And this is not advertising, this is just letting you know. Festal has a promotion that finishes tomorrow. And it's about these. If you want one, you'll save $150. Your call. 
Uh, if you go to Festool's website and uh, go to their page, or I'll see if I've got a picture down here. Now this is any dealer, not just Carbotech, any dealer that does Festool, uh, you can get that for, it's normally 930 Australian down to 775. So your call, whatever you want to do, take it or leave it. I'll come back to this one, but you may be impressed. When I, when I turn this machine on, you might be very impressed. I was, I was. Uh, what are we up to? Quarter past. And uh, where are we up to? Chat, we're gonna do the chat. It's on special, the different speeds. Uh, support the channel through Patreon if you can. That's always very welcome. Um, I think I've got 11 patrons that are in the level that uh, I put your name up on the, at the end of the show. And sometimes I read their names out as well. And it is fantastic. Thank you so much to everyone that is supporting the show by doing that. Now, I'm going to also put one more of these remotes on. I've got two of them are missing there, see? They're out the back. And you want to hit, this one is the dust extractor. Don't know if you can hear it, but it's running. Turn it off. <laughs> and this one is my air compressor. off. The third one, I'm going to remove the infrared remote off the big dust extractor, the two horse, and I'm going to put this on it. Now, why am I doing that? Because every time I turn my room air filter on, the bloody dust extractor turns on as well. And it's ticking off because it's infrared. These things being wireless, through walls, or straight across the workshop, and they're all on different frequencies. So it's not going to turn anything else on. It's not going to interrupt anything. So there you go. Let's get into this demonstration. I'll move that over there. I've got this camera right beside me. I think I've got everything happening here. I'll move that over there, that there. I'll get the piece of camphor. Now this piece of camphor laurel, I got down at the Canberra Timber and Working With Wood Show. Now I've spent a bit of time on it, cleaning it up. Now I've taken that to 1200 and I've used the ETS-5 and I also used Organ Oil's hard burnishing oil. Now I'm going to keep on working on this and take it to 4000 using 4000 plate and two. And uh, it doesn't have come up fantastic. Do you like the look of that? What I'll do is I'll switch the cameras over to the close-up cam and you can see it from the side. I'll bring it up and around a little so it picks up the reflection. What do you think of that? That is just beautiful. Now I'm going to turn her over and we're going to work on the other side. Uh, one of the great things that I've, re I've been working on a little bit, move that out of the way. I've had that highly polished side on the bench, this thing here and been sanding and there is not any scratching on the other side at all it's just it's i love it now we will see we have this is a crutch of a tree in the camphor laurel so i think this is a, probably a branch out here and this would have been the main trunk i think so what we're going to do is we're going to sand this because it doesn't have anything here that's any one direction now I'm going to turn the sander down. Before I do that, how about I have a look here. There's a beautiful piece of wood. I'm reading down through here. Stephen Lee, impressive. John, he nearly didn't get it. Almost ended up in the car for Julia. Darren, beautiful grain. Uh, I'm a fan of camphor laurel. Let me get this. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, go down to sanding speeds. Now, I'm going to leave this up for a minute so you can read it. I'm going to read along through with you. Okay. Sanding with the maximum abrasive. Now, this is not easy for me to read that because it's coming up very small on the screen. So I'm going to flick through to the English section in here. Okay, so speed five to six is sanding with maximum abrasion, sanding off old paint, sanding of wood and veneered surface, prior to paintwork, intermediate sanding or painting on surfaces. Now, you might think this is uh, just rubbish, but it's always good to actually know 
And I guess this would work with just about any of the sanders that any company make if it's got a variable speed from one to six. Up to you. Um, okay, four to five is recommended for sanding thinly applied undercoat, sanding wood with a sanding cloth, edge breaking on wooden parts, smoothing primed wooden surfaces. Three to four, sanding solid wood and veneered edges. Now, so I hooked into this with it on six. I should have had it on three or four. I was turning too fast. So it, this has only got a little two millimeter stroke, but I'll tell you what, well, with the um, granite net, I was very impressed on how quickly it was taking the material off. Um, okay, a sanding rebate of windows and doors, intermediate sanding of paintwork at edges, light sanding of natural wood windows using a sanding cloth, Sanding wooden surfaces using sanding cloth before staining, rubbing or removing excess limestone residue use, using a sanding cloth, down to two to three, intermediate sanding of paintwork on stained surfaces, cleaning natural wood rebate using a sanding cloth, and down to one to two, which is the slowest speed, sanding stained edges and sanding of thermoplastics. Now, I guess that's so it doesn't heat the thermoplastics up too much. I guess that would be things like um, perspex. So I'll come back to the close-up cam here and switch back over to there. So hopefully, hopefully that uh, has given you a little bit of information. You know, I've always looked at these things and I thought, oh, turn off flat out. Don't worry about mucking around with it being slow. Uh, now the other thing, I'll turn this around this way so you can see the base pad. If you are using ordinary paper, go straight on the pad. If you're using the mesh, and you can see it's a gauze, this is 80 grit. See that? Use an intermediate pad. The reason being, if this gets hot, you're likely to melt all of your Velcro hook and loop kind of thing. So that's what they say, is they say, use these things. So who am I to argue with them? And that's gone on. Whoop, that hasn't gone on very well, David. Do it again. Maybe do it like so. There we go. That's looking a bit better. The holes are all lining up. There's only one way you can put this on. Face all of the um, print work down. So when you're looking at the surface, you can't see anything, okay? Well, sorry, when you're looking at the surface, you don't see any of the printing. Don't put it on upside down. That's the side that cuts. Now, I'm gonna turn it down to three to four. There it is. Now, this bag on the back is a long life bag. It's a dust collection bag. And if you're outside, great, but I'm inside, so I'm gonna hook the dust extractor straight on. These are, these are great, <laughs> but why you, look, it's balanced as well. That's one of the reasons why the batteries are like that instead of hanging out down here because they don't fall over. And the dust extractor here, the new cable, or sorry, the new hose goes straight on. Now it twists and locks, so it ain't going anywhere. And not only does it have batteries, it also has this. Now this is an AC connector, so I can undo the battery and I can put this guy in. And then the plug-it cable that comes with it, and you can see I haven't even undone the plug-it cable yet, it's still connected. Plug straight into there, into the dusty, and you know, away you go. But the thing with the batteries, so they say, they say that the batteries last um, 30 minutes and they say it's a 25 minute recharge. Now, I haven't seen that 25 minute recharge yet, and I find it's a little bit interesting because in their book on the charger, it tells you the different batteries and what speed they charge at, it says 33 minutes. So I guess, you know, 30 odd minutes, we're not gonna quibble. Most batteries are fully charged, or you know, almost fully charged within probably 80% of the time. So, you know, I, I reckon the last part is just trickling it up. All right, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. 
Um, Jeff, I love my Triton belt sander. Uh, I do a lot of scroll saw work, so I turn it upside down. Yeah. Oh, good on you, Jeff. Steve Morbach, good advice with intermediate pad. Doesn't come with the machine. No, it doesn't. What's the best stroke for a sander? Well, same. The, they're all different purposes. So that's, that's why this thing has got me you know, just amazed. This is a two millimeter stroke, which means it's got a two millimeter oscillation, uh, little circles. So the smaller the stroke, the finer, they say. So I, my Rotex is a five millimeter stroke. I don't have a machine with a three millimeter stroke, but if I was to get an ETS um, three, maybe, you know, maybe I would. But this thing, I reckon I might bypass the ETS three and just go straight to this. Now, I'm, it's not gonna make a lot of noise. It's not a lot of decibels. I'll turn the dusty on first. Bluetooth, I love it. So you may want to turn it down a little bit. I'll turn her on. Did you watch? Okay, there's a question there. You'd like to know the difference with the, if there's an AC. You can see the lines here from where it's gone through the drum sander. And they're almost gone over this side. This is the side I've been working on. Now, let's have a look at that paper. There's no clogging. This paper is the duck's guts. <laughs> okay, so... Then we'll have a look at this. This is the interface pad. And still, the one underneath is perfectly clean. Working great. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to keep sanding this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it over to the AC. One thing I'll say though, is when you turn this on and off, it stops really quick. Watch. Stops quicker then I've got the opportunity to put it back down on the surface. All right, let's take this out and we'll put a lead in. Now, if I was using the, um, this bag, I'd probably use this as well. Seeing I'm hooked up through a HEPA dust extractor, I don't really think I need to. How are we doing for time, guys? And I'm going to take you through the, uh, hold on, what's going on here? I've moved something. Uh, where's my mouse? Back under there. I'm getting all of these messages coming up on the screen here. All right, now I'm going to pop this, which is the adapter, in. And I'm going to cut this. I should have really done this part earlier. Just use the fingers at the moment. There we go. Now this is Festool's super lightweight cable that's designed for sander, so it's very flexible. Plug it into the automatic socket on the CT26. Now this will override the Bluetooth and it's just something else to hang off the back of the machine. But the question was, is it gonna be any more powerful? Now I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is going 
work because I haven't tested it. It should do. Turn it back up to there. Let's have a look. All right, how many people we got watching? 112 watches, 23 likes. It is a lovely piece of wood there. Warren, thanks for watching. Sorry I didn't say good day last week. You know, I watch this uh, in the evening. Vicky and I sit down and watch the show and do a little bit of a critique. And uh, I, sp I spotted your comments on the side there. All right, I'm going to turn it on and it should turn the dust extractor on at the same time. There she, there she goes. Feels like the same power to me. So this is 80 grit. And I think the mesh goes down to around, uh, let me see, 400. I've got everything on the inside of the box there. I'll talk to you. I'll go through it all with you in a minute. Wow, that's doing a whole lot better than I thought it would. Those lines from the drum sander are slowly going. Now the Rotex would have been finished by now. But if you're in a situation where you only... You only have room or can afford only one sander, this might be an option. I've never really considered this as being a, sa a standalone sander. Wow, that's going so well. No dust, I can't. I'm even struggling to smell the camphor laurel. And that's something on its own as well, like if a good indication as to whether a dust extractor and the filtration is good. If I wasn't using this particular machine, I would smell the camphor laurel big time. You know how camphor laurel just smells beautiful. I'm only just getting a faint hint of it. Now that's coming out quite, quite nice. What I'm going to do is go to Carl Cam and see if we can have a look. Transition. It might actually be better. Um, I've got the dust extractor set to flat out because I'm on 80 grit. Um, the, one of the quest questions there from um, Russ, the, I can turn the speed down on the dust extractor so it doesn't pull the machine down hard onto the bench and create those swirlies. But I, you know, two millimeters, I don't know. I'd, 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 stick with, um, I'd stick with the 80 at the high speed and then I'd drop it down the speed as I was going through the other grades, maybe just as another pass over with the 80 grit. But the other things, let's have, let's have a look at a couple of things that comes with it. Now that I've shown you how the machine works, and I'm, 
I'm pretty impressed. I'll go to the uh, to the front camera. And we'll do a little bit of reading. Here we go to there. Uh, the cutting surface, it's a huge advantage, Barry. Um, yeah, Abernet rolls. And also you can get those from those things from um, Festool as well. They sell those kind of things. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about abrasives in a second. Um, never thought I'd watch other people sanding. Leroy, it's just <laughs> it's one of those stupid things, isn't it? Um, I've already spoken to you about the dust extractor. Warren, uh, I'd like to wish you and your family a happy new year for 2000. Thank you, Warren, uh, for 2019. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dave, new web address not told or in the description below, isn't it? Okay, well, the new web address, if you're interested, uh, <laughs> I just read Michael's comment as well. No, it's staying with me, this one. Um, the web address is www.stantonbench.com.au S-T-A-N-T-O-N-B-E-N-C-H dot C-O-M dot A-U um, Paul, morning all from Melbourne. My apologies for being late. I'll sit in the naughty corner. Okay. Uh, you, it's only 20 minutes or so to go, Paul. Uh, we've been talking about the Granite Net, which is the, the paper that I've been using here, which is a mesh. Now, I've got this particularly to do a sanding job on steel joists and I need to clean them. They've rusted. I need to clean them back big time and there's a lot, a lot, a lot of surface area. I went for this particular machine because it's got the rectangular base. I can get right into corners rather than having one that's a round pad. I wouldn't have been able to get into the corners um, because it's, a, it's an I-beam style uh, joist and there's a lot of them. Uh, so that's why I've chosen this one. I'm not really a fan of, of the ones that look like an iron. The reason being, you push down in the corner there and it kind of wears it out. Uh, although, you know, you can get a lot of concentration in that one spot. I guess painters like them. I work on the principle, well, this one, I've got four corners that I can work with. If I've pushed hard in one corner, I can rotate it and go again there and there. You know, this thing ticked all the boxes for me. This is why I got this one. Uh, it's the batteries are an 18 volt battery when you put them in and let's have a look at the actual thing itself I'll move this camp floral off the bench it's been very good and have a look at the other side after we've done all that sanding it's still perfect these cushion strips I love them do you know also with this bench I don't know if I tell people this much you can flip it over you can undo the legs turn the whole thing upside down put the legs back on again with the apron in the same position it'll work perfectly <coughs> And, and, and uh, it's a flat surface without any of the cushion strip. This uh, cushion strip here, the other side's dead flat. So this gives you the best of both worlds. But isn't that magic? I, I saw this at the show before the show had even opened. And I went over and I bought it straight away and took it back, <laughs> put it by my little stand. I thought this is absolutely magic. And that's, you know, it's got to be a good inch and a half thick, which is, you know, 38 millimeters for people in Australia. I get into trouble. I do get into trouble for talking in metric and imperial. I'm a child of the, uh, the conversion for Australia. There you go. Why not a wire wheel on a drill for rusty metal beams? Ah, because they're only very thin. So these... These beams are joists and they're made out of 1.5 millimeter thick steel, I think. They've been folded and, and uh, welded by machines. So it's, a, it's an I-beam like that. And when I got mine, they weren't offered as galvanized, but then I tried to do an extension. Next thing you know, uh, I couldn't get them as just ordinary steel. They all came compulsory galvanized. And I guess the reason why is because um, they, were, they were rusting. So. Let's move on to this, and I'm going to show you a little bit around this set. Now, this is the set that I was talking about earlier in the show. This is the full set it comes with. Again, I'm showing you because for interest, in case you want to get one. Two of the batteries, and these are an 18 volt, 3.1 amp. And they have a little thing on the back here. Three lights, good to go. Two lights, I think it's 40 to 50% charge, one light nearly flat or up to 40 percent 
So these go into an existing Festool charger. It just there's a little there's two little slots down the side here. I don't know if you can see them. And what they do is they go into the top. Don't try and just put it down on top and drag it into the charger. It won't go. And you'll go, oh, Dave talking through his backside there. You've got to go all the way forward on the charger and drag it back down, making sure that the, the wings engage into these little slots. So they say 30 minutes charge and you'll get 25 minutes out of a battery. So the thing is, you put the battery, you, it comes with two batteries. You put the battery in, use it, the other one's in the charger, switch them over when, when it runs out and keep going. And terrific for someone that's going to be using the charger that much. I don't know if anyone would do. Um, comes with a charger. This is this bad boy here. And it's got a little cord area here to, to wind the cord up. Lives in there. It's got a little instructions on the front here as to what everything means. The different colored lights. Uh, the good thing about the Festool stuff and their sustainers is just it all it all fits. It just works so nicely. It's got a little um, shroud as well. Let me take that off there and that one off. So this little shroud, I've never tried the shroud on it yet. Let's see how it goes. Uh, there, 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 and there. Okay, this thing stops you bumping into walls and at the front there. So it sits proud. Let me see, is it all the way in? It should be. There it is, that's, that's all the way in now. So it sits proud by around six millimeters. So in the old language, that's a quarter of an inch. Uh, on the sides, it's probably a little less than that, maybe four millimeters. So if I was doing something and going up to a skirting board or doing a skirting board on the side and I didn't want to scratch the polished floor, I'd go with that, I'd put that on. I don't know if it improves the dust extraction. It might do. I don't think that's what it's there for though. I think it's just to, there to protect everything. Um, read a little bit. Uh, Paul, Dave, speaking of both metric and imperial is a talent, plus it speaks to your international viewers. Well, there you go. No extra, no extra cost. <laughs> Steve, uh, set is good value. I reckon so too. For, like Festool's not cheap. Everyone knows that. But uh, the set, as I, as I say, the, the set is cheaper than buying everything in indiv individually. If you need all the parts, get the set. Because it comes with this sustainer that's got a drawer at the bottom. Do you see this? How cool is that? Now, if anyone's got one of these sets, they'll realize immediately that I've taken one of the dividers out. I took the second divider out and I just kept it in the cupboard. That allows me to put uh, the charger, sorry, the, the, the power feed and the cable. I can put the cable wound up and I can take that off there and I can put that in there over there beside the sandpaper. Now the sandpaper comes I've got three different grades in there at the moment. And I found that if I was to put the paper, let's take one piece out and put it in there, it won't fit across, which I think is a bit of a blue, uh, but it'll fit long ways. You'll only get one lot of paper. And I wouldn't like to put two lots of paper in there because they're gonna get mixed up. So this way I managed to get three lots of paper down there. I think it was more economical use of their space. I've lost the top of my head here from the show today, haven't I? Oh well. That's the way it goes. Um, <clears throat> now, so that's great. And it works like all the other sustainers do. Now, here's something as well. Here's an interesting part. Stephen, you've got this set. So have a look up the top here. Now, this is the part that I really enjoy. It tells you all the different part, things that you can get. This, this is such, so much information up here. It tells you the different models that you can get, the accessories for them. And it tells you the paper that they make for that particular machine. So for, for this bad boy, my little guy, the square one, and you can remember it's the square rectangular one because it starts with an R for rectangle. I don't know what the T stands for, but it'll be rectangular something sander C for cordless. Because they do have another one, which is an RTS, which is their little rectangular sander. It's a 240 volt one or 110 in the States. Um, oh, I put a link down at the bottom as well. If you're interested in getting one in the States, I put a link to Amazon, to my little Amazon site. And remember, if you buy something on Amazon using one of my links or go into Amazon using a link of mine, it helps the show. You know, we get, we get a little bit of a percentage, only a very small amount, comes back towards us. And as I say, it's, 
Amazon basically saying thank you for introducing someone to purchasing something through an online store. Your call. Okay. Um, okay, so it will take Granat up to 400, Granat Net up to 400, so 80 to 400, the Granat Ordinary Paper 40 to 400, the Ruben 2 is normally for timber, but I think they're phasing all that stuff out. 40 to 220. I just get Granat all the time. Br brilliant, forget that. Uh, fleece. Super fine, 800. So you can get 800 fleece for this, which I think is going to be great because that's what I waxed. That's why I finished this after I waxed. I hit this with 800 fleece. Now, if you want to be a little bit cheeky, now also I read through the book, be aware if you use other people's sandpapers. Now, I don't know how they're going to work this out and tell you this, but if you use other people's sandpapers, you void the warranty. I guess it's because they're thinking you're going to close up the holes and it's not going to do the correct dust extraction. But something to be aware of. But using Festool sandpapers, I reckon I could go down here for the stuff that's designed only for their, what do they call it? The ETSC 125. I reckon if you were to get, because they don't have Platon, Platon 2 for this guy, and I think that's a bit of a mistake. So you go down here and you can go 400 to 4,000 platen. Now, there was something I was going to do. I wanted to measure this box. I haven't tried. I get excited talking about tools. I'm just, I'm hopeless. Am I the only one? I, I like to be aware. Like, I like to do my research before I go and spend my money. So I, I, I guess you do as well. Uh, tape measure, tape measure, tape measure. Do I have one out here? I, I've got a ruler. There we go. I'm curious as to what across there is. Because if it's 125, it is, bugger, it's 150. But that's all right. There is platen, 150 millimeters, for the Rotex. If you were to buy some of their platen for the Rotex, and got some scissors and used a piece of their, where is it? This over the top and just cut around. I reckon you could pop the plate and straight onto there. And then this takes this bad boy up to 4,000. And that is really, really nice. And that is what I will do because I just want to see when I'm doing hard burnishing, if this, if I take this, you saw the gloss on that camphor. I reckon if I take, that's only 1,200. If I took it up to 4,000, I reckon, you know. <laughs> That'd be so cool. That'd be so cool to do. Where are we up to? I'm going to do a little bit of reading. Oop, drop the cord. Uh, Jim K. finally arrived at Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, is that? 645. John, some time this show can get expensive. Uh, two big 2.2 uh, yellow box slabs to finish. <laughs> so, sorry, John. What can I say? Yeah, all I'm doing is uh, showing you. It's your call if you want to go and buy them. You know, it's your choice. Pfft, makes no difference to me. Um, have you tried the Festool phone app? No, I haven't. Is there a Festool phone app? Tell me more about it, Barry. Clifton, uh, Roger, Roger Clifton. Hello, Dave from the UK. Stephen Lee, Dave. Any chance the Festool might manufacture a cordless version of their multi-oscillating tool? I need a cordless multi-tool. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they will, but where would they put the battery in those things? You know, I think the whole thing with a cordless is to try and keep it light. I know there are other cordless tools on the on the market, but I don't know whether or not I don't know whether or not they'd hold their charge very long with the batteries. What's the next thing? Steve Wallbank, research is part of the fun of tooling. Oh yeah. It's it's a blokey thing. And plenty of girls too. Like, there's there's a lot of women that are really enjoying this kind of stuff because you know why should guys have all the fun in the shed? You know, it's it's one of those things that uh, I have a ball. Vicky loves working in her shed. She does lead light and she does uh, jewelry and soldering and a little bit of welding. Uh, she has a ball. She and painting now. She's developed a, a love for painting. So there's an easel set up in our lounge room always. And she's very good with it. At the beginning, there was no easel. All these paintings were happening on the benchtop 
over the kitchen sink. And when she'd turn a painting to, to get, a, get to another spot, all this stuff would go crashing <laughs> onto the bench or into the sink. And I just, I'm a good husband, I shut up. And uh, I think she thanks me for that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, now she's got an easel and she's loving it and she's doing some beautiful things. She's doing mountain ranges with foreground and lakes and getting shadows correct. I love it. Love it. Anyway, uh, let me see. Let's, let's Makita make an 18 volt multi tool. Okay. Uh, Barry, it, it logs your tools and warranties. Also shows all extra bits and consumables. That is very interesting, Barry. I'm going to look that up. Now, before we get too far along, I think I've shown you enough about the. Um, about the, my little RTSC, so rectangular. I have to remember, uh, R for rectangular, D for delta, and the other one, uh, which is the E, are probably eccentric, eccentric sander. Cordless. What a great idea to have a hybrid machine. That's, that's the reason I got this. I love it. All right, next thing, next thing, next thing. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things that I was having a look at on during the week. A little bit of point of interest. And as I say, the dust extractor, I haven't even had a look in there. Do you want to have a look inside before I do, do something else? Look, I'll spin this camera around and we'll have a look straight down inside it. Uh, where are we? Turn that so it's a ball head so it looks down. And let me see if I can get the other camera going. Close up cam with that. Uh, Brian, love the story of Vicky's easel. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to switch cameras. There. Now, this is the um, their, their dust separator. I don't think they call it a cyclone. So let me come down here. I think close enough to it. Uh, it's, it's a box that's got clips on the side to take the top off. And inside here is the separator. So it works basically like the Thane, the Thane baffle. You know that one that spins it. All of this stuff is loose. You can take it all out. And there's, there's the baffle there. You can see it's been working. And there is dust in there. And when I first saw it, I thought, oh, gee, this looks a bit dodgy and it's all rocking around. But as soon, as soon, as soon, you have to line that up. As soon as you turn it on, it sucks it down flat. Let me turn it on and it's, it's not coming off. This holds down to a certain degree, but when you shut the lid, it locks it all in position. It doesn't go anywhere. I'll turn it back onto auto. Um, it comes with this connecting hose. That goes, it's anti static, of course, all the way down to your main section there. It's about a 27 millimeter hose. I was thinking about whether or not you could put a 36 millimeter hose, and I'm sure you can, and that might increase the, uh, the cubic meters an hour. So it says on the side here 27 millimeter hoses, three and a half meters long. This will, at full speed, going to your dusty will pull, pull 41 cubic meters an hour. Uh, with a 32 millimeter hose, 58 cubic meters an hour. With a 36 millimeter hose, three and a half meters long, 73 cubic meters an hour. So that's, that's pretty cool. I had heard that possibly it would restrict the amount of airflow by 20%. But I think if you have a larger hose, it probably will be just as the same as using a 27 millimeter hose. That's just me thinking out aloud. But uh, the good thing I like about this, it's nowhere near as tall as a cyclone above. And I can put more sustainers on the top of that, which is this whole system is designed around it. To give you an idea of how big it is, that's it there. There's another attachment, and I've got the other attachment as well to use. I don't know if I'm going to keep this one or not. They've sent it up to me to have a muck around with, to use it, see if I like it. Um, I may send it back. <laughs> but uh, it's good fun to be able to play around with these things in the meantime. Uh, so I can put other sustainers on top. Let's throw the other one here on. 
So straight away, I'm on. And I can still open that drawer. I love it. How good is that? So this is getting close to what a dust deputy with a cyclone on top would be as far as height's concerned. But I have now, I've still got, I can get to everything up here. So you're looking, it's probably a little bit more expensive than the Dust Deputy one for people in Australia, but uh, only just. So, you know, I know people make up their own Dust Deputy kind of thing for it. I'm going to switch the cameras back again. And uh, how do you empty it? I have no idea. I haven't got that far. There's plastic bags you can put in it. Um, <sighs> okay, Paul, uh, I got a cutting board in Christmas present from my son where he had burned in the wood, wood phrase, how are you, <laughs> with a clear reference to. Thank you so much. That's pretty cool. That's lovely, pal. Thank you. Uh, John, not in Australia, Barry. Uh, yeah, Brian, that's amazing. Barry, that's a shame, John. Okay, I've, I've, I'll have to catch up with all that stuff later on. Russ Albright, do they make a dust separator for the MIDI extractor? That will go straight onto the MIDI. It's not a problem. Um, they have, because, I'll take this off and show you. They're both right angle connections. So this can go in on a MIDI or a MIDI, MIDI or a MIDI, and uh, yeah, vacuum it up. Good on you, Steve. <laughs> and you can still put things on top and have this come out through the front and up to the extractor. There's enough hose there to do it, I think. All right. Let me see. There's some other things I wanted to show you apart from that. So that, that was a quick have a look around that thing. Uh, there's a larger box over there for cement if you're doing grinding. And there's plastic bags that come with it as well. Let me see where we are down here. So trend timber stack. So do you want to know who won the competition? Or oh, the sweepstakes, should I say? Let me see if I've got any more pictures here. Um... No, I don't. But the $100 gift card from Trend Timbers. And I will read out some of the entries. And basically, I've said what kind of timber. I'll switch back over here. What kind of timber uh, you would like or what would you like to get from Trend? Um, Cypress Pine, New Guinea Rosewood, Wengi, difficult to choose from Deb Scott. Purple Heart is always nice. Uh, rock Maple, that's Purple Heart and Rock Maple are my favourites. Um, Laos Rosewood. Uh, I'm going to say Western Shear. This is from Matthew. I love this timber. If you have a chance, they look up Beefwood. Saw a pool table made with it once. It was beautiful. Spotted Gum from Simon. Greg Beginney, love the Wingy and Purple Heart. Steve Gray, uh, Hue and Pine, number 11A. I didn't know that they had all their timbers categorised. Um, Blackwood. Uh, <laughs> Leroy, uh, I'd like the Tasmanian Blackwood, but uh, I'd rather have $100 off the Laguna dust extractor and joiner I've just put on order with them. <laughs> uh, Jarrah, Tassie Oak, Tassie Blackwood, um, Purple Heart, Camphor Laurel, Brazil Bloodwood, uh, Cedar is nice, hard to choose, Zebrano perhaps, and I'm going to keep reading through these, there's not many more to go. I love all the different species of wood. Uh, river red gum, um, walnut, a bit of this and a bit of that. <laughs> Paduke, black art sassafras, um, Australian hardwoods. Let me see. Uh, going down through here, and this is the winning one. So if you remember writing this, it's all nice, but especially anything from Tassie. So Derek Lark, you're it, buddy. You won it this time. So Rafflecopter picked your name out of all of those entries that went into the sweepstake. I already have your email address, so I'll flick you an email. And uh, if you can just get back to me with the easiest address for me to get Trend to post that uh, card out to you, that'd be fantastic. When are we having a look here? Okay, I will uh, put the link down there. As I said, it's stantonbench.com.au. So www dot stantonbench.com.au 
Uh, Russell White, can you email a reminder about the Craig dust extraction? We're going to have a look at a few things here. Give me a second. Here is someone who, uh, that, that was the switch. So Joe, Greg Christmas Bench. Here we go. Another recipient of the Stanton Bench is Greg from up in Queensland. And he had no idea that was coming. His wife uh, purchased it for him. What a lovely woman. Uh, then we've got the sanding speeds and let's have a look here. What do you think about this? I love the color. I go into a hardware store and I'm just surrounded by all of this color. I love it. I love it. I love it. Look at that. Makita is on display. This is at Mitre 10 up at Katoomba and uh, I love to have a walk around there. And when I walk through this section here, I thought of Jeremy Carter as well. Uh, dear, where are we? Go to the next one, which is back to me at the beginning. I'm going to have a quick look down the side here. We're nearly done for the day. I'm going to quickly check down through here. So we know who's won. And uh, I want to see pictures of your wood shop, your workshop, your tiny space. I don't care how small it is, how large it is. I need to see photos of what you're doing, where you enjoy going just to get away from the world and be creative and just hang out. And I'm sure other people would love to see your, your, your um, private space, if that's what you can call it. I love coming into this workshop and sometimes I'll absolutely do nothing. I just might get a can of beer and sit in the corner and just smile. Do you, any of you do that? Um, let me see. I look for mag switches in Bunnings, but no luck. Mag switches. No, there are no mag switches in Bunnings. Mag switches are at Carbotec. And, uh, but these things are you talking about these? These are Arlec remote control power outlets. These are um, Uh, hello, I've got someone here who's just sent a message saying not living in Australia, mainland USA or, and Canada. Sorry, I'm not sending the benches anywhere else at this stage. Eventually, I'll get a, a manufacturer in the UK and we can take it from there. But at the moment, uh, okay, so I'm going to read through here. Steve and I bought a few for, at uh, B Dural, Bunnings Dural, not many left last week. Uh, wireless switches, okay. Dust mask hasn't arrived yet, Greg. I will send a pic when it comes. Okay. One of the reasons being it's uh, I'm on holidays. I'm not back for about five or six weeks because I've, I've had enough. <laughs> I just want to do stuff for myself for a while and I will send a reminder email. I had sent a, an email down to the manager at the Sydney store, uh, but I will ring him up tomorrow and just check that he can get it out to you. All right. So what have we got down? I'm still reading through. The Cyclone works better with the clear tube attached. I have it also. Cheers. Okay. Barry, another great year of great shows. Thank you. Have a happy new year. Stephen Lee. Yes, absolutely, Dave. What was that about, Stephen? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get it. Um, Joe Moo. Yes, I used to do a can of... Oh, okay. You're going to send some photos to me. Thank, thank you so much. I presume. I think that's what you meant. Joe Moo. Yes, I used to do a can of beer in the workshop. It was a relaxing time. Michael. Yes, I do sometimes just sit and have a drink in the workshop. John. Email sent. Um, and that, I think, guys, is going to be it for today. I'm going to go and have, do a bit of shopping this afternoon. What temperature you got outside? 36 Fahrenheit outside at the moment. 25 in here. Let me see what that... Sorry, 36 Celsius, I should say, which is 96 Fahrenheit. I'm not too good with the conversions, am I? I've got a little machine. It helps me because I'm old. Um, John... Oh, Hi, John. How are you, buddy? I'm hoping you're doing better than you have been. I'm hoping you're advancing and getting back in the workshop. John hasn't been well, had a little bit of a health scare, and he built a beautiful workshop and couldn't get in there and start enjoying it because his condition went downhill. So now he's back, and uh, I hope to see some more pictures of what you're doing there, John. That'd be great. If you could uh, send some photos off for me, that'd be terrific. Uh, you might retire soon, Dave, with the income from your benches. Well, wouldn't that be what? great? Hey, help me out, guys. Help me out to retire so I can sit here and play with the toys. <laughs> uh, Ken Wills, hope everyone has a great new year, Dave. I'm going to send you some photos. That'd be great. Thanks, Ken. Joe, have a great holiday, Dave. Uh, Russ, all right. Thanks for a great show. Barry Doxy, six degrees there. Jim K, Dave, get in the corner and have a beer. Happy New Year. 
2019. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Stephen, yes, a cold bottle on an Iron City beer. Some quiet time in the shop. It's great. Send me some photos of where you enjoy being in that, in that workshop of yours, or even if it's just outside on the veranda with maybe a couple of saw stools and a piece of plywood. I don't care. I'd love to see it all. Here we go. I'm going to do this part here, and I'm going to say thank you to all of my subscribers, to my Patreons, and to everyone that helps me get this show, this crazy show out to you. And, 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 as I say, let the ads run. Make a cup of coffee or check your emails while it's happening. It helps. Thanks again. John, you've put up the link for the Stanton Bench. I'll do it in the description box below. Have a look down there. Use the links. I shall see you next year. Where do we send the photos? I've just read that. Send it to my email address. It should be down in the description box below. If it's not there, just go on to stantonbench.com.au and there's an email link there. But whichever way, it'll get to me. Tim, 18.3 here in Melbourne now with showers. Gotta love Melbourne weather. That's crazy. That is crazy. I forgot to say, have a great week. Be nice to each other. Do all you can to help each other out. And uh, I hope you stay healthy and... Uh... Oh, look, John, everyone's... <laughs> Helping me out there again. Thanks again. I'll see you all later. Bye.